I've noticed that there's a lot of confusion surrounding fermentation, so let's break down the most common methods and what they're used for. Lacto-fermentation is probably the most well-known method for making foods like pickles, sauerkraut and kimchi. The process creates an oxygen-free environment by submerging vegetables in a salt brine or dry salting. Lactic acid bacteria consume carbohydrates in the form of natural sugars in the produce and convert them into lactic acid. This lowers the pH and creates an acidic environment that preserves the food and enhances its flavor, all the while inhibiting the growth of harmful bacteria. Another less known method, which I came to love, is wild fermentation, used in making things like ginger bugs and tepache. It uses microorganisms like yeast that are present in the air and on the skin of produce to feed on sugars, converting them into acids, carbon dioxide and small amounts of alcohol. This method needs a bit of trial and error because results can vary depending on your environment, but you can create the most delicious probiotic drinks with just a handful of ingredients. A more controlled method is cultured fermentation, where a specific starter culture is introduced to ensure consistent results in taste, texture and nutritional profile. Examples would be the SCOBY and kombucha brewing, kefir grains for water and milk kefir, as well as yogurt making. And lastly, we have mold fermentation for making tempeh, miso, soy sauce and certain cheeses, as well as alcoholic fermentation for wine, beer and cider, as well as sourdough, which combines alcoholic and lactic acid fermentation. Each of these methods has its own unique benefits and challenges, and understanding the process behind them will help you gain confidence and safely experimenting with different methods at home.